Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new educational video here at Market Wisdom. So glad you're joining us this afternoon. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time, make sure you do hit the like button and subscribe. This afternoon we're talking about uh, market making, something that obviously happens both uh, on the automated side of things and uh, manual as well. But uh, can we use market making as a strategy? Uh, that uh, can be profitable one. We'll also uh, tell you a little bit about exactly what market making is. Let's bring in Neil and Sean here and we'll uh, get right into things and talk about market making, guys. Is market making a profitable strategy? Yeah, I mean, like, you have to understand one thing. Uh, lots of profits are made in market making. The vast majority is from the largest firms like your, your Citadel's uh, automated trading and algorithms that are going to be doing it. And market making is exactly as it says. If uh, I want to go buy shares of, of, of a stock, I need a seller. Uh, and if you want to have an orderly market, you want there to be buyers and sellers uh, that are providing liquidity to the market at all times. So that if you call up uh, and, you know, you can just go to any symbol here. I can just make one up on the top of my head. You go to J.P. Morgan, uh, you go to the current bid ask. Uh, you will see buyers on the bid. You will see sellers on the offer. So if you want to get 100 shares, 1,000 shares, there, there's an available market for you at almost every single price. Now, yes, some of that is people that are you know, traders and investors in different time frames uh, that are indicating uh, where they want to buy and sell. But there are also market makers whose job it is, and sometimes they make money doing this if they're good, uh, is to simply provide that liquidity to keep the spread at one cent. They're bidding almost every single price for minimum amounts of shares. They're offering almost every single price for minimum amounts of shares, sometimes a little bit larger, and then constantly adjusting that flow. Uh, so it's, you always see it happening. It, it used to be uh, more heavily done uh, in manually, manual trading. Most of it is done by algorithms right now. Uh, there are ways to profit from it. I do a little bit, bit of it myself, but it's not nearly what it was 10, 15 years ago. Uh, so understand it is an algo-driven game. Uh, you know, knowing that it's happening on every single market is important. And I think that's a good starting point for the conversation as to what market making is uh, in the first place. Every, uh, every stock in the New York, in New York NASDAQ Amex uh, has market makers that are usually on them if it does any real volume, Sean. Yeah, remember, market makers aren't really going to care uh, about a position at the end of the day. All they're really trying to do is exactly what Neil said there is make the spread however you can and just, just make the market, right? Sit on the bid, sit on the ask, pick your key levels, and just figure out where to get in and out. It's a much different strategy than breakouts or momentum stocks. Uh, it, it's just it's a brand new kind of game. The thing about it is you have to have direct market access and you have to be able to see the different gateways. It's not that it's a brand new game. It's been happening forever. It's just that if you have direct market access, and lower fees. I think that's what we mean uh, by that it's a relatively new thing for a lot of traders. If you're paying five or ten bucks a trade, then it's going to be hard to make that spread, right? But if you're getting rebates and or pay zero fee, then hey, a thousand shares, one cent, you do that ten times, it adds up, Brendan. Let's get into uh, fees a little bit. Obviously going to be a significant part of making a market. That's why uh, we like to look at uh, ATS fees or rebates. You might have heard the term credit trading in the past or rebate trading and that specifically refers to uh, the rebates that a gateway to the market will pay you to provide liquidity. Let's touch on that a little bit, guys, here uh, and, and talk about, I mean, it's, as we said, not as prevalent anymore as right. fees are being adjusted, but at one point, credit trading was very profitable. Yeah, exactly. And the principle behind this, of course, is, look, if you're sitting around waiting at, an average, at a price, uh, you know, I'm passively bidding $7.01 on a stock or something like that, uh, aggression moves the market. Uh, if someone sells and says, I want shares right away, I want to sell to the best buyers at 701, uh, that type of aggression is what moves markets. It's aggressive orders, not passive ones. So every time you take a fill as a market maker, in that split second, you're kind of wrong uh, momentum wise. So why would someone step in front and say, okay, I'm willing to be uh, sitting on the bitter ask and then news could come along and adjust uh, price expectations and I get my shares picked up before I have a chance to pull it? Uh, so there's a pay for that privilege, and it's called a rebate. Uh, so I'm just uh, going to show you one here. Uh, you can see NASDAQ, it's NSB, BATS. This is, a, this is a MOBL uh, on the NASDAQ exchange. Uh, EdgeX, uh, ARCA, these, these gateways all pay you uh, a small rebate uh, per 1,000 shares, uh, anywhere from a, from a dollar to $2 uh, per 1,000 shares. If you place your bid passively and wait for a fill, uh, when someone comes aggressively, they pay a fill uh, anywhere from 2 or $3 per share. So... That allows you to be able to trade in and out at the same price. You add liquidity on the way in. Nice if you can get the spread. Uh, but if it ticks down and you offer at the same price, 
uh, you could get paid two, three uh, dollars per share. If you do that enough times, you can make some money. Now, you're going to obviously say here, well, you need the stock to not move. So one of the things, and again, it's not a coincidence, I'm going to show you MOBL. Uh, this company is being bought for $7.05 all cash. Uh, so one of the few places where you can anticipate a range uh, the best is in, in, a, in a leverage buyout where you have a, a cash price. And you might see something like this, uh, a stock which trades literally in a one cent range for most of the day. And if you are confident in that range, like, like I was this morning, I literally shorted the top. I got out, made the spread, I then shorted it again, I made the spread, and I'll probably do it a couple more times throughout the day. It's not free money, however, because the notion of uh, rebate trading or spread trading or market making is win small lots of times. When you lose, you lose big. If everyone can see this same level at 701 and uh, it doesn't go anywhere, what do you think happens when the bid gets more and more thick because more people want to buy at that price and be able to sell it for the spread? The more people that get filled at 701, the more people that are going to offer it trying to get that rebate when it goes down. The more people that are going to panic when it breaks that and even. So if you're doing this style of trade, um, which has turned into spread trading because you want the fastest fill, I don't even care about rebates anymore uh, because I want to get in and out as fast as possible and not lose spread. It's all about how small are your losses. So risk management becomes everything. Uh, because you cannot lose 10 cents when you're only making one or when you're getting in and out flat. Uh, so stubbornness is not part of the game. It's discipline, have a structure, have an idea of what a range might be. Uh, and, and that's why that style of trade is not as prevalent as it was before because huge advantages uh, to the algo and automated side when it comes to that style. Uh, yeah, if, if you're using your hands, it's going to be a little tricky. You definitely would want to automate something. I have another example here, and I broke it down with a five-minute chart. It's just Aurora Cannabis. And what you're really looking for is if you can't find stocks that are like that, buyouts, leverage buyouts, like what Neil was just talking about, then look for a stock that does relatively good volume every single day. So Aurora just reported it's doing five, six million shares today. And look at this. If you're going to trade a stock that moves, that doesn't have... That, that definite level behind it. You want to leave it alone for maybe the first 10 or 15 minutes, right? Then you get settled down. Once you find some ranges, you can then begin to sit on the bid and on the offer and sort of average in. I did want to talk about that. Market making's not only just one penny in and out. You can average back and forth. So what I would do is wait until a specific symbol gets below this blue line. This is volume weighted average price. This is VWAP. So as soon as you're below VWAP, this is what the big boys do. The algos will start to short stock ahead of VWAP and you just start to play the market making game with your position starting on the short side. So in this example, you know, you would short 84, then maybe you would short 82 or 81, downside, downside, and then you have bids. So every time it's coming down, you're collecting that one or two pennies and keep average. So then you would short here, 76, short again at 80, short again, 81, 82, and then you have a nice average price. So when it falls back down, you start to not only get some rebates possibly, but you're making the market so you're standing there on the bid with passive orders and sitting there on the offer with passive orders and just making spread but remember guys do not get carried away if aurora cannabis had earnings you do not do that if there's news about the cannabis sector you do not play it what you're looking for is just small little stocks that aren't ready to break out and i don't see any breakout levels here you may want to protect bottoms but it's averaging in and averaging out on stocks that simply don't move capture the spread that's market making on stocks that potentially aren't huge movers yeah and that's uh, that's going to be the key and you noticed on that chart there the uh, the congestion or the the consolidation is going to be during lunchtime when the volume's a little bit lower not as many eyeballs on it you can get in and out maybe you know five six seven eight times over a span of two hours real quick guys let's touch on inverse gateways or inverse ats uh, gateways uh, ways to access the market but we need to be able to get out of these positions very quickly so uh, you're looking for that passive entry either on the bid or or the offer but when it comes to getting out uh, with a preferential or a very very quick fill let's talk about inverse gateways right. yeah I'll, I'll give you an example here like let's just look at something like a Fitbit which yesterday shorted off of seven dollars all day long uh, but a bit of a bigger range it had 10 15 20 cent range if you're only making two three four five cents you don't want to lose 10 or 20 if it were to take the top off I mean I'm thinking with a deal price of 735 it could go to like 715, 720 on me rather quickly. Uh, so it becomes very important to get that fill first. Uh, if I'm shorting at 99, and I just want to get in and out as many times as I can, if you take a couple thousand shares, you can make 20 bucks for making the spread. 
you know, do I care at that point whether I'm paying a dollar per thousand shares or whether I'm getting paid two dollars? If paying for the fill is going to get me in and out more often, uh, save me from taking a hit if it goes against me, then you're going to do something like that. And I think that's one of the things, especially like in an ACB, like Sean mentioned, if the stock is going to move more, uh, you, you can't get hung up on, oh, I need to get paid to trade. Uh, anything that's going to be profitable is, gonna, is the way that you have to be able to trade this. And I've been doing, uh, whether you want to call it market making, spread capture, rebate trading uh, the entire time, and it used to be, uh, when I was up on a day, I would be down in gross and I would make money by collecting a rebate. Nowadays, I am paying fees on these stocks almost every single day just so I can capture spreads. So making gross and then paying is the way to go now, the way these algos have gone, because if you're not fast enough, it's just not going to matter. Uh, I'd rather get the fill as soon as possible if I have to pay for it uh, to get a good price, and that's what you got to go ahead and do. And so you take advantage of things like uh, here, it's going to be bat Y, edge A, uh, a couple of these, M's, you know, boss X you can see on the bid, they're like inverse gateways. So you add liquidity, you are paying uh, to add liquidity when you get that fill. And the person removing liquidity is paid a fee. Uh, the consequence of that is if I'm looking to aggressively buy at $6.99, obviously I'd love to reduce my fee. So if I can get paid to buy off of this order here, why would I, why would I not do that first instead of paying uh, two or three cents per, uh, two or three dollars per thousand shares on NSB? I can get paid a buck to do the same thing on Bat Y. Therefore, it's likely to get filled first. So if you're going to get that fill uh, first through at 99, maybe you sit on one that makes it the incentive of someone else to come get you uh, first off the book. Yeah, check with your trading platform and your broker. We're lucky enough to be here with Day Trade the World. And just come to my screen quickly. I'll just show you. This is the New York market. This is our keyboard, sort of uh, what kind of keys we use and how it looks. But these are all the gateways we have. It just keeps going. Arca, Bark. It goes on and on and on and on and on. So the important thing is here, there may be 30 different routes and whatnot that are available. The reason why we bring that up, guys, is just to tell you that check with your broker and with your platform, which gateways are the best as far as fees and fee sensitivity because you want to know what you're doing. If you're going to market make, you either have to make sure that you are gaining those rebates or you're at least using something that is free or relatively close to free because if you're going to make 100 trades in a day, you don't need those fees to add up and take away from the actual gross winnings of the trade. Yeah, very good point. Uh, we have to understand the cost of trading, obviously, but uh, as Neil was mentioning, if we're looking to capture the spread, we're making that gross on that one penny, so we're not necessarily concerned concerned about the fees on the way out as we are uh, getting in. So lots of great stuff there, guys. As we said, not really as prevalent on the manual side. If you're a manual trader, uh, more on the algorithmic side uh, this day and age. But hope you learned something there about market making. Let's go to Valeria. Hey, Brandon, thank you for this great explanation. Guys, please subscribe to this channel and join our live trading show every day at 9 a.m. Eastern Time.